Well, trying to clear off the bench. I still have a whole bunch of stuff to do. Uh, this is a dead saw salvage, so what we're going to do is tear this one all the way down. I don't expect you to sit for all that in the video, so what I'll do is I'll do it on video. And then, you're going to see it happen in high speed. So, we got a lot of work to do on this saw right here. But by the time you see it, it's going to look like it's a minute job. Well, doing one of these things, but the first thing you got to do is come up with a place to organize your stuff. So this one's going to get its own project box, you know. And I'll just start putting stuff in there. And then we're going to strip it right down. Take that cylinder right off of there.
that's how it's supposed to be, right? And what happens is you basically pull on the trigger, that gets hooked on the piece of plastic in there, and you're spreading those two points apart. Pin goes in there, so basically it comes in this direction. All right? And then uh, you gotta make sure that that tab is underneath that orange tab. Pin goes in. So it does like that, right? So now you have to hook the spring in there. If you look, there's sort of an area, a little spot right down there where the spring hooks in. And it goes to the outside of that tab, it looks like to me. It just kind of goes in like that. Uh, underneath this, underneath this, outside, underneath, outside the tab and just hooks in like that. There's that. You sort of angle the handle like that, and you get it in that, that one hole first. It just sort of pops in like that. But giving it that angle before you push and shove is, is pretty crucial. So we got the handle on. I checked the squish. Piston's not the best, but it's not the worst. I'm going to put it right back on. Well, I put it right back on. But you see that distance from here to here on those straddle ports? And also the width of the intake? It's kind of one of the limitations of these darn things. Sometimes it makes little sense to give it a little bit more intake duration. But since I'm dropping the cylinder, I'm going to pick up a couple of degrees of, of duration, so I'm not going to really do anything on the on the um, on the piston or the or the port but you pick up I don't know 20 30 thousands it'll, it'll actually run a little bit better with a little more duration on these I don't know why but you can't go wider on that port because next thing you know you'll be right into those strato ports so just an anomaly just one of those things um, and again to review kind of blended that so deflect a little bit of the air down into the bottom versus through the strato ports which by the way now we're going to have gas oil mix so it's going to get better lubrication on that piston because a straight strato saw that's straight air that goes through there just air so you have air into here washing that whole side of the piston you don't have as much oil in the mix and then by gutting that again you're going to get the the fuel mix up in, in this set of ports as well as this one instead of just straight air which means there's going to be oil up in there which means there's going to be oil all around that piston ought to make for a little bit more reliable saw right and of course we did that as well I mean that's the essence of the modification on this saw I guess where I'm going with this is it's another simple modification that you can do on a saw such as this, this is an X-Torque, that anyone can do, it doesn't take a whole lot of skill. The reason I'm not going to deck the cylinder, I'm just going to do a no base gasket build, is twofold. One is I want to prove the point, 
But the second is most people who do something like this are not going to have a lathe. So I want to do this build back to the roots of the channel, which are simple tools and being able to modify a saw to run better without doing a lot of sophisticated work. That's the essence of this. And I'm basically just going to put it right back together the way it was, you know. That bottom end is solid, very solid. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's got steel cage bearings in there. My hunch is that that's a bill that that bottom end was something I had done a long time ago for somebody. There we go. I want you to look at the size of the notch on the right hand side on that carburetor versus that carburetor. I've been having, I've been having a tough time getting uh, this saw here to idle. It wants to rev and I have to wonder if there's different versions of these damn things. That one's smaller too, but this one here definitely has a much larger, much larger uh, cutout on the slide.
So what did I discover? That carburetor is different on the later version of the X-Torque. And after I've done the modification, one of the later carburetors solved the high idle issue completely. So I guess that was the takeaway. And now it just uh, puts along at a low RPM and I guess I'll have to put it in the wood to see how much power it has, but it's just too nasty out to do any saw work. Let's see if it'll restart. See, that's the way I like a saw to work, just like that. So, all right. Live and learn. The other thing I did on that carburetor was I adjusted the metering lever because it was pretty, um, it was it was not adjusted properly. It wasn't giving enough fuel. And the other thing that I, I changed on this particular saw was this was just like cardboard. You can almost hear it crackle. And I don't think it was working very well at all. That plus not having enough travel on the metering lever. Plus having a larger cutout add all that up and I wasn't getting a nice a nice idle. One more time, let's see if it refires. I like it. Alright. I know my bench is a mess, but at least I have one more saw done. I have to helicoil that right there, then that saw can go right out the door.